All right, 3-4. Okay, so this section is equations of linear functions from their graphs or uh, either from their graphs or from information about the graphs. Okay, so you'll get a few pieces of information and then you'll come up with the equation of the line. Okay, so step one, we're going to find or determine Uh, the slope of the line. Okay, find or determine the slope of the line. That's the first thing we're going to do. Second, we're going to write the equation of the line using a point and the slope and we'll do this when appropriate or where appropriate. Okay, so typically what we're gonna do is we can figure out the slope. Uh, we have enough information to find the slope. And then we can write the equation of the line using a point. We usually have enough information for that also. And um, using that, we're gonna use the point and the slope. So typically we're gonna use point slope form. Okay, and we're gonna go through eight cases, these aren't this isn't an exhaustive list of all the cases, but this is enough that you can get by. And when you get other situations, they're going to be similar enough to one of these cases that you can figure out um, how to come up with the equation of the line. Okay, so case one, you're given a point on the line and you're given a slope. Okay, this is maybe your ideal case because you're given a point and you're given a slope. Maybe this line goes through the point two comma negative seven, and the slope is equal to uh, negative one third. Okay, you're given a point and a slope, you're gonna do point slope form, which is y minus y1 equals your slope times x minus x1, okay? Or y minus negative seven equals your slope, negative one third times x minus your first point, x minus two. There is your equation of your line. It's simplest form. Point slope form is the simplest, usually the easiest to come up with. Now, when we get to the next page, we're going to talk about how to transform. Once we have point slope form, we're going to transform into the other forms. Okay. But typically, not for all the cases, but typically we're going to use point slope form as our starting base. Okay. Case number two is you're given two points. on the lines. So first case, you're given a point and a slope. Here you're given two points. Maybe you're given the point two comma seven and uh, negative three comma five. Okay. So step one, find or determine the slope. Here we need to determine the slope. So we could do y two minus y one, five minus seven over x two minus x one. Five minus seven over negative three minus two. We're going to get negative 2 over negative 5, which is positive 2 over positive 5. Then we're going to use point slope form, y minus y1. Pick one of your two points. Either one will work. I'm going to use this one. So y minus y1 equals your slope times x minus x1. There's your equation in point slope form. Okay. Next case, you might be given a slope and a y-intercept. Okay. Now you could do point slope form, but since you're given a slope and a y-intercept, you're probably going to use slope-intercept form. So maybe your slope is equal to one-seventh, and your y-intercept is equal to two, and then you can use slope intercept form. So y equals, you plug in that for your slope, times x plus two. Okay. That's gonna be slope intercept form. I know it's a different form, but we're gonna talk on the next page about transforming back and forth between the different forms. Okay, case number four, you might be given um, a slope and an x-intercept. Okay, 
Okay, maybe your slope is equal to negative uh, four thirds. Maybe your x intercept is equal to negative three. Okay, now in this case, we're probably going to want to call that negative three, comma zero. So there's your point, and here's your slope. Okay, so this one, we're probably going to use point slope form. An x intercept is simply a point. So this is really um, the same case as number one, where we have a slope and we have a point. They just call it an x intercept. Okay, so we could do y minus y1, which is zero, equals your slope times x minus x1. Okay, that's point slope form. You could have also done slope intercept form, but there would have been an extra step. Okay, you would have had to solve for b by plugging in that point. And you don't need this mi minus zero here. If you just left this as y equals negative four thirds times parentheses x plus three, you that would also be considered point slope form. Okay. Now couple more cases. Now you're going to be given different information. Maybe you're given a point and you're given an equation of a line that's parallel to the, the line that you want. And a uh, uh, equation of a parallel line. So for instance, you might be given the point negative Four comma two, and you want the line parallel to let's say y equals two thirds x minus five. Okay, well, if your line is parallel to this line, parallel lines have the same slope, so you know that the slope of the line you want is going to be the same as the slope of this line, so 2 over 3. And now you've got a slope, and you've got a point. So we'll do point-slope form again. So y minus y1, y minus 2, equals your slope, 2 thirds, times x minus x1, or x plus 4. Okay. And again, if then the question asks you to put this into slope-intercept form, we could transform it or standard form. Okay. The next one, you might be given a point and an equation of a perpendicular line. So you have a point, an equation of a line, but you want to make your line uh, perpendicular to this line. So maybe you're given 1 comma 7, and you want the line perpendicular to, and I'm going to put this one in a different form. How about um, y minus 3 equals negative one-third times x plus seven, okay? So your line has to be perpendicular to this line, but it has to go through this point, okay? The slope of your line has to be perpendicular to this line, so it's not going to have the same slope. The slope of your line, or the line perpendicular to this line, is going to have a slope that is the opposite reciprocal. Meaning, think of any two perpendicular lines. If one has a negative slope, the other will have a positive slope. Okay? But instead of negative one-third, it becomes positive, and it becomes positive three over one. Okay? Because if it's perpendicular, the rise becomes your run, and the run becomes your rise. Okay? Now, coming up with this equation, you're going to get, let's use point-slope form, y minus seven equals your slope, 3 over 1, just call it 3, times x minus 1. Okay. 
And then the final two are kind of unique situations. You've got a horizontal line. Okay, horizontal lines will always be in the form of y equals some constant. And then a vertical line will always be in the form of x equals some constant. Okay, so if you have a horizontal line, horizontal line passing through, let's say passing through uh, negative one comma negative five. Okay, if you want, you can sketch a graph. Negative one, one, two, three, four, five. Horizontal line. You could do point slope form. Or if you know that y just equals a constant, that's going to be y equals negative 5. Horizontal lines have a slope of 0. Because remember, it's the rise over the run. Horizontal lines, your change in y is always 0. Okay, so your slope is 0. So whether you put it into point-slope form or slope-intercept form, you'd put in 0 for your slope. You could call it, and then you could use this point here, 0, negative 5. So y plus 5 equals your slope of 0 times x minus 0. As you see, this whole side is 0. You get y plus 5 equals 0. Solving, subtracting 5 from both sides, you'll get this. Okay? Now a vertical line. Let's say we have a vertical line passing through, and you'll always be given a point. 2, comma, 3. I have a vertical line passing through 2, comma, 3. 1, 2. 1, 2, 3. It's always going to be x equals a constant, so something like x equals 2. Now notice this one, your slope. You can't use any of the equations for slope because rise over run doesn't give you zero. Your rise is going to be some value, whatever two points you pick, how much did this y change? But your run is always zero. So this gives you something that is undefined. Okay. And I'm going to make another video um, if you want, you could stop here, use these notes, and work through the next page. But I will make a video going through all these problems. You can fast forward to the parts of the video. If there's one you're stuck on, you can fast forward to that part of the video. Watch that question. I will do them in order. Uh, but that's what I'm going to do next. So until next time.